Today's podcast episode is going to take a slightly different form. Today, I'm going to invite you to interact with some reflections, some questions, and some exercises that I'm going to offer up. So you might want to listen through the first time, and you might want to come back to this later. You might want to put some notes in your phone if anything resonates or comes up for you that you may wish to explore further. But yes, a bit of an interactive session, as it were. And I'm going to open today's podcast with a poem. Now, this is one that I've written. This isn't a shameless plug, but it does kind of encapsulate and set the scene for what I'd like to explore with you today. And the poem is entitled Unseen. The washing machine sings its demand. The dryer has a less peppy beep. WhatsApp forms and field trips. School text messages with don't forgets. Softly sung, time to get ups. Docs, dentists, opticians, orthodontist, haircuts, hospital, schedule, rearrange, remind. Discarded lunch cards pressed back into hands and pack lunches made. Water bottles filled, PE kits found. Have you done your homework? Teacher parent meetings, revision books to order. Listen to this, look at this, help me with. Where are you? I need you. Can I go? May I have? How long until dinner? Where is my? What did you do with? Do your steps. Close the rings. Letters and post-it notes on the fridge. Milk for tea accompanied by a silent lecture. All the things still not done. Daily schedules, monthly overview, yearly calendars, birthdays, gifts, late cards and apologies. Must check in on, must call, post, must thank, need to buy, return, run out of, reply to, the phone rings, shoulder given. Put away, pick up, tidy up, unload, reload, stack, wash, rinse, dry, fold, repeat, repeat, repeat. Suitable footwear and waterproofs, food tech Tupperware, last minute ingredient dashes. What are we doing for Christmas? Change the bedding, dog, cat food shop. What's the plan for dinner? The oven beeps. You're always tired. Uniforms, bedtimes, Wi-Fi off, negotiations that feel like battles. Weary of warfare. Worried about them. The yet to come. Tutor calls, open days, applications. Cow pole and glasses of water carried back up in the dark by knees that crack. These days. Are they happy? Please let them be happy, carry their heavy. Hopes and dreams squeezed into the day's remains. Make a wish. You should, they say. Why don't you, they ask. Arms laden and weighted with others' belongings. The answer goes unseen. Does that feel familiar, that poem? And I know I wrote it from a place of feeling weary and needing to voice outwardly the invisible and emotional labor that I carried. It was as though I needed to list, I needed the world to acknowledge how much we carry. And with that, my first question and the subject of today's podcast and its self-care. I'd like to ask you what words come to mind when you think about self-care? Take a moment. What images, what places, what activities does the word self care bring to mind? And did any of those include eating three balanced meals a day? What about getting enough sleep? What about saying no to the things you don't want or don't have the energy to do? What about voicing your needs to your partner or loved one? What about boundary setting with your mum-in-law who shows up unannounced and rearranges your living room furniture? What about telling your boss you're at capacity? What about not worrying that you will be considered a crap mum, friend, daughter, employee, employer, if you don't do everything? What if you could find time for self-care every day and not feel the guilt? And as I say those words, I imagine they are typed in capital letters. The guilt. Guilt is an emotion 
that really does leave us trapped. If we are resting, but feeling guilt or shame, or we're justifying or trading off with being more productive, feeling like we have to have earned it to ourselves or to others around us to prove that we've earned that right to rest, then we aren't resting. We just feel chronically tired. So breaking that, beginning to unhook the act of rest, and resting is an act. It is something we do that has a benefit. It has an outcome. It starts with permission, unconditional permission. And that starts with valuing who we are, valuing what we are worth and what we do. So my first question to you is, when was the last time you said these words? I feel and I need. And you would pop whatever word adjective you need in that sentence. I feel exhausted. I need you to step up and support me. I feel overwhelmed. I need to step back and take something off my plate. And if it's been a while, or never before, why is that? And when you imagine doing this, is there a particular word, thought, or feeling that comes up for you? The truth is we take care of the things we value. We can always find a reason to push through, but that doesn't mean we should. Self-care means valuing yourself enough to use your voice, exert your boundaries, and express your needs. And with that, I would like to share with you something called the Bill of Rights. Now, the Bill of Rights consists of several statements that are built around self-worth and valuing ourselves and our needs and wants and desires, physical, emotional, I'm going to read them out and I would love to know what comes up for you initially and I'll share with you what came up for me and what I've struggled with and what I've had to kind of spend a bit of time processing and working through. So the Bill of Rights starts like this. I have the right to be treated with respect as an intelligent, capable and equal person. I have the right to state my own needs and set my own priorities as a person, independent of any roles that I may assume in my life. I have the right to express my feelings. I have the right to express my opinions and values. I have the right to make mistakes. I have the right to change my mind. I have the right to decline responsibility for other people's problems. I have the right to say I don't understand and ask for more information. I have the right to ask for what I want. I have the right to deal with others without being dependent on them for approval. So as you listened to those, did any of them make you feel uncomfortable? awkward? And if so, where did you feel that in your body? Take a moment just to explore that. For me, it was the statement, I have the right to ask for what I want. And I, when I first read the Bill of Rights, I felt that very clearly in my solar plexus, which is also where I feel shame. And that's because I want, that word want is very much tied up with being selfish, in my mind, stamping feet, putting yourself first and being, that being thought of as a terrible thing to do because we're conditioned, we're so often conditioned to be self-sacrificing, to be all giving and nurturing, to be compliant, to give over our comfort in order to appease someone else's discomfort. I want was something I associated with parental frowns and the idea that I was being petulant or even, dare I say it, greedy. How dare I have a want? But actually, 
if we don't have enough wants and life is just a cacophony of shoulds and musts and oughts, well, that leads us to a place of resentment. It leads us to a place of exhaustion. It leads us to a place of self-abandonment. And that has a direct impact on how we relate to others, how we relate in all domains of our lives, including our relationship with food. So in order to get more comfortable, get more comfortable with expressing our wants and our needs and our desires and using our voice, becoming more assertive, we have to begin the work of valuing ourselves. We have to begin the work of building our self-worth muscle. And that starts by exercising it on a regular basis. So the next exercise, you're going to need a pen and paper. So you might just want to remember this, come back to it later. If you've got a pen and paper now, you could press pause, go find one. And it's called the petals of worth. And for this practice, I want you to think about all the characteristics you value about yourself. But these are things that have nothing to do with your appearance. Okay, perhaps you're funny. Maybe you're a good listener, you're smart, you're a hard worker and so forth. And I'd like you to draw a flower in the middle of your paper. So in the middle, a big circle and around there, a series of petals. How many have I got on mine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've got eight petals. Draw eight petals. And then each of those petals, I would like you to write in a characteristic that you value about yourself. And if you have trouble coming up with positive attributes, I'd like you to think about compliments you've received, which again have nothing to do with your body. Think about how your best friend would describe you. What would they say? What would they put in those petals? And I'd like you to label each petal with one of your attributes. And when you've done that, I'd like you to reflect on how easy or how difficult that was. How far away are you from valuing yourself? Where is your self-worth at the moment? How can you begin to build that muscle? And with that, I offer you another small practice that you can do on a daily basis in order to do that. And this is particularly worth doing if you found that previous exercise difficult. I'd like you to take a notebook and a pen to bed. And I want you to pop it on the bedside table. First thing in the morning or last thing at night, I invite you to complete the following sentence. One thing I value about myself is, and it can be small, really small. Like I value the fact that I make a good cup of tea. I value the fact that I can give a good hug because it's about building the muscle. And if you are uncomfortable relating to yourself like this, then we need to create comfort. We need to make it easier. We need to start talking to ourselves in a way that says, you, my friend, you, myself, are worthy of being valued. And from that place, you are worthy of having needs and opinions and wants and a voice and boundaries and time and rest. One thing I value about myself, doesn't matter how small, it's just the act of beginning to create that dialogue with yourself, that valuing, compassionate dialogue. With that, I'd like to close today's podcast with a quick meditation. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Find a comfort. Actually, if you're walking, doing this dog walking, don't close your eyes. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. Don't close your eyes if you're walking anywhere. <laughs> so maybe pause this. Come back to it later. <laughs> but don't, whatever you do, close your eyes if you're doing something that requires open. Start that again, Rose. So I'd like you to find a comfortable seat, somewhere safe. <laughs> and once you're sitting comfortably, I invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in, filling your lungs. And as you exhale, release any tension or negative thoughts. Just drop your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Relax your jaw. Relax your hairline. And drop your shoulders. Now, Bring your attention to yourself. 
visualize a warm, gentle light surrounding your body. This light represents your self-worth and self-value. With each breath you take, imagine this light growing brighter and stronger. Brighter and stronger. Warm, gentle light. as you imagine that light growing brighter and stronger, I invite you to reflect on all the unique qualities and talents that make you who you are. Think about the moments in your life when you have overcome challenges. When you have shown kindness to others. When you've achieved your goals. These experiences have shaped you into the uniquely wonderful person you are today. And as you continue to breathe deeply, wrapped in that warm, gentle light of self-worth and self-value, I invite you to repeat silently to yourself the following affirmations. I am worthy of love and respect. I am worthy of rest. I value myself for who I am, not just for what I do. My needs matter. I am worthy of expressing them. I embrace my flaws and imperfections, for they are part of my uniqueness. Allow these affirmations to resonate within you, sinking deeply into your consciousness. Feel the warmth and love that radiates from within as you acknowledge your own worth. Now take a few more deep breaths. And with each exhale, release any doubts, release self-criticism. Picture this self-worth and self-value firmly rooted within you. Imagine the light that surrounds you traveling down the roots like a strong and unshakable tree, down through the branches, down through the trunk, down through the roots. The light rooting within you of self-worth and self-value. When you're ready, I invite you to gently open your eyes. 
and return to the present moment. I invite you to carry this sense of self-worth, this rooted light, these roots of light that are deep within you throughout your day today. Remember that you are a valuable and unique individual deserving of expressing your needs, using your voice of rest, of love and respect. As always, I'm rooting for you.